Hello and thanks for tuning in to another video. Now in this instalment I'm going to talk about my current process for scanning my large format negatives. So I've made a few changes to the scanning process so I thought I'd do an updated video to go through that. So the way I scan my negatives is by photographing them over a light source and then importing them into Lightroom and running them through a plugin called Negative Lab Pro. Uh, I've got some really good results from this so it's something that I'm certainly going to be sticking with. So to get started we need a, a light source and some way of holding the negative over that light source so that we can photograph it. Now the light source that I'm currently using, uh, which is actually the one that I've always been using, is uh, an A4 light pad. It's an LED light pad and when you're looking for something to use for this purpose you need to look for something that's got uh, an even illumination on them and this one is this one does have quite a consistent illumination so that works really well now the other thing that we need is a way of holding the negative over over the light pad now i have been using just a, a cardboard cutout basically made out of some artist board but i wanted something that was a bit more elegant and robust so I enlisted the help of a friend who does 3D printing and sent him some designs and he's come up with this solution for me so we've got uh, a base plate with some little feet on it and then there's a frame that slots over the top that uh, creates a little ledge on the inside where the negative can sit and that can just sit nicely over the light source now the reason for the little feet are to suspend the negative above the light source just a little bit because if you have the negative flat on the light source especially with the one that I'm using sometimes you can see the pattern of the LED matrix through the scanned image which doesn't look very good at all and it's not something that you can edit out so just by having the negative lifted up from the surface a little bit eliminates that problem completely so what I'll do now then is I'll set up the scanning rig and we'll go through the process of preparing the negative, scanning the images, bringing them into Lightroom and then putting them through the plugin Negative Lab Pro to invert and colour correct them. Okay so I'm going to set the copy stand up using a, a, a monitor arm. So I'm just going to set that up on the side of the desk and then to hold the camera I'm going to use one of these Manfrotto super clamps. These work really well and they're really robust. So I'll just position that part way down the stand for the time being. So now we'll get the camera attached. So I just want to get a rough idea of the position of the negative carrier here. Just so I can set the, the distance between the camera and the negative holder. So I'm just going to lift the super clamp up until I've got the, the frame part of the mount in the frame and then just lock that down and then what I can do is turn on the, the backlight on the light pad and then I can start looking at the, at the focus here. Now what I like to do with this lens is to set it so that the focus is just before the end stop of the of the camera so it can take a little bit of fiddling to get this right and I've got focus peaking on and manual focus on this lens so what I usually need to do is just zoom in to a portion of the image that's got quite a lot of detail in it and then you can get a good idea so that's the end stop of the lens there so it's just a little bit back from the end stop and that will give me the perfect focus there. And what I will be doing on, on here is to set the lens aperture to something like f11 and that will just help preserve focus and deal with any slight curvature of the negative. So what I'm looking for when I'm setting the, the shutter speed here is to get a wide range of tones on the histogram. Now the one thing I need do need to do with this particular lens is to shade the stray light that's coming in from around the side of the negative holder to stop the, uh, the lens flares there. So I'd say that's about the right exposure there. So I've got that at 160 ISO which is the native ISO on this camera and a third of a second exposure. 
Now a quick note about lenses. When you're choosing a lens for a scanning application like this, you need to make sure you've got minimal distortion. Basically you want the, the edges of the negative holder to be parallel because we're taking a picture of the negative in two halves. We need to join it at the midpoint, so you want as minimal distortion as possible. This particular lens is a, a really old Carl Zeiss M42 lens, a 50 millimeter on a M42 to Fuji mount adapter. And this lens works really well. It's got really low distortion and it's very sharp as well. So this, this is working perfectly on this large format application. Now I've used it as well on medium format and 35 millimeter negatives. Sometimes you need to use extension tubes for that because obviously you've got to as well deal with the uh, the minimum focus distance. But this for large format applications, this lens is, is working really well for me. Now I like to use tethered shooting for, for taking these images of the negatives. So I'm just gonna plug the camera in and that will allow me to just take these images and they'll go straight into Lightroom. Now, before we go any further and actually start taking images, we need to make sure that the, the camera is parallel with the film holder in both axes. So to do that, I'm just going to use a, a bubble level. Okay, and then the other axis I can do using the, the mount at the bottom. Okay, and it's also worth just checking the that the negative holder is also level in both directions on the light pad, which in this case it is. So we're good to go to the next step. Okay, so I'm ready to take these images. So I'm just gonna do a last check on the position of the negative here. And then just check the focus. I need to put this mount on so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, right, so. I've got my exposure settings done. I've got the focus set. So the last thing I'm gonna do is set a 10 second self timer. And also a point to mention here is that the white balance needs to be fixed. So I've set this on 5600K, so it'll be exactly the same for both shots. So I'm just gonna take that photo now. Okay, so that's now been imported into Lightroom for me. So I'm just reposition the negative carrier to do the bottom part of the the image. And that's my two images now imported into, into Lightroom. So if we hop over into Lightroom now, I'll, uh, I'll go through the process of stitching the images together and doing the conversion in Negative Lab Pro. Okay, so here we can see the two images that we've captured using the copy stand and the next thing we need to do is to join these together. So I'll select both images and select Photo Merge and Panorama. We'll wait for the preview to appear. Now I'm just using Boundary Warp here just to expand the, the edges of the, uh, the image here. I'm going to turn Auto Settings off and I'll just hit Merge and wait for Wait for that job to be completed. Okay, so here's our merged image. I'm just going to rotate it. So that's the image rotated. Uh, now, before I crop the black borders out, we need to set the white balance off the film base. So we can see the film base in these little cutouts that are on the, uh, the negative holder. So I'm just going to select select that. Now with that done, I can just crop out the negative holder. OK, 
Okay, now we can uh, open Negative Lab Pro and get this image converted into a positive. So there's a couple of different colour models to choose from. So we've got uh, two um, professional scanner emulations, the Frontier and Nuritsu. I usually leave it on Frontier. And I leave the these settings as the default settings. So I'm just going to hit Convert Negative now. And that's going to give us a converted DNG file. So that's uh, what the converted negative looks like. Looks looks quite good actually. Uh, now I always do my edits on um, a TIFF file. So we do that just by selecting this Make Copy at the bottom here. And the dynamic range on that looks quite good, but the other thing I like to do as well is just to bring down the, the highlights a little bit. It just gives a bit more information to work with in the converted TIFF. So if I now go and hit apply, that will create the TIFF file for us. Okay, so there's our TIFF file. So we can go and make our edits on this as we would normally do. I'll just go back to the converted DNG file and show you what happens if I try and edit this using the standard Lightroom control. So everything is reversed. So if I bring the if I bring the exposure down, it actually is bringing the exposure up. And it's the same with adjusting the contrast. Highlights, shadows, they all work in a way that you're not really used to using. So by converting it to a 16-bit TIFF file, it just allows us to use the controls in the way we, that we normally expect to use them. So I'm going to go and apply some edits to this image and uh, we'll come back and have a look at the final result. Okay, so here's the final edit that I've put together here. I'll just go through what I've changed. It's quite They're quite subtle changes, uh, but they just uh, help to lift certain areas of the image. Okay, so this is what the original scan looked like. Uh, it didn't, in fact, need any changes to the color balance sometimes sometimes they do or, or i might want to warm an image up slightly or cool it down but this one i'm happy with it uh, it's exactly as it is so i've left the color temperature and tint i have lifted the saturation ever so slightly and then what i've done is gone through and added some brushes to various parts of the image so i started out by just lifting the shadow areas of these rocks in this pool here. So I've just uh, put a brush over the, the dark areas and just lifted those slightly. Uh, the next thing I did was to mask the sky and just deepen that down a little bit with some, with some slight dehaze. What that tends to do is push up the saturation quite a lot so following that I added a graduated filter and then reduced the saturation on that uh, graduated filter just to drop the blueness down in the top half of the sky. I then added another graduated filter going from bottom up to the sort of first quarter of the image and just added a little bit of clarity there just to enhance the, the detail in the foreground area of the image. And then the last thing that I did, which if I point it out now, you probably won't have noticed it before, but there's a slight darkening of the negative in this top middle section here. So I just masked that out and just lifted the exposure a little bit to, to make that disappear. And I also cropped um, some of the top of the image as well, just to balance it out, because there's quite a lot of sky above these clouds here. But overall, I'm quite pleased with that edit. It's got a nice warm look, but it's uh, got a, a soft look as well at the same time. This this image was taken on the beach at Dinas Dintler in North Wales. I did actually video this, so I'll put a link to the to the video where I took this image, so you can go and check that out. I hope you found that useful and hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks to use in your own scanning process. 
If you want to keep up to date with my channel then don't forget to subscribe and if you hit the notification bell you'll get notified when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again next time.